This video is about competing function model validation. We will use residuals, context clues, and other factors to decide whether a linear model, a quadratic model, or an exponential model is more appropriate. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.6. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Selected values from several functions are given in the tables below. Sketch the scatter plot for each table, then determine if a linear, quadratic, or exponential model is most appropriate. Here's the scatter plot for number one. The pattern looks roughly linear, but let's see if we can back that up with numbers in case we are ever asked to justify. The rate of change on a given interval is the change in output divided by the change in input. So between these first two points, there is a rate of change of two thirds, which is approximately 0 0.67. Between the next two points, the rate of change is 0 0.75. With the exception of the 0 0.25, the rate of change is roughly constant. If we were pressed for an explanation, we would say linear because the rate of change is roughly constant. Here's the scatter plot for number two. The pattern definitely appears exponential, but what if we had to justify that? Notice that we have mostly equal length input value intervals, mostly. Notice that from 0.5 to 1, the output values are doubling, and then from 1 to 2, the output values are doubling again. And then going back to my equal length input value intervals, from 5.6 to 11.3, this is very close to doubling as well. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit more than doubling. Uh, maybe it's like 2.5 or something. Uh, but that goes along with the fact that this is a little bit more than the normal equal length input value. That one was 2.8. We can say that g of x is exponential because the output values are roughly proportional over equal length input value intervals. Hmm, here's the scatter plot for number three. This is not a perfect match, but if we have to choose between linear, quadratic, and exponential, we have to go with quadratic because that's the only model that goes down and then back up again. To explain, we can say quadratic because the output values decrease and then increase and are roughly symmetric. Here's the scatter plot for number four. It was looking roughly linear until it got to the last two values. Now I'm thinking an exponential model might be more appropriate. Let's check to see if the output values are roughly proportional for equal length input value intervals. Three of the four input value intervals have length three, so let's focus on these three intervals. Eight divided by 10 is 0 0.8, so that's the first ratio. Rounding to one decimal place, 5.1 divided by 6.5 is also 0 0.8. 4.1 divided by 5.1 gives us the third ratio that is roughly 0 0.8. We can say k of x is exponential because output values are roughly proportional for equal length input value intervals. Number five, a quadratic regression was used to model a set of data. The residual plot for this model is above. Which of the following statements about the appropriateness of the model is correct? Note, any pattern in the residual plot means the model is not appropriate. This residual plot definitely shows a pattern, so the quadratic regression model is not appropriate, and the answer is D. Number six, over the years between 1950 and 2020, the total world population can be modeled by a linear function. Selected values for the total world population P in billions are given in the table above where T represents the number of years since 1950. Part A, use the regression capabilities on your calculator 
to find a linear model of the form y equals a plus bx for the world population in billions, x years since 1950. Hit the stat button and hit enter. Let's enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. Once the data is all typed in, hit stat, switch over to the calc menu, and scroll down to the linear regression model. There are two of them, but we were told to use the one that's in the form A plus BX. So you can either scroll down to item eight, or you can just hit the number eight. Before we calculate the linear regression model, I always recommend that you store the model in Y1. So hit the VARS button, switch over to Y VARS, hit enter, and hit enter again. That way, if we need the regression model to do something, it'll be waiting for us right here in Y1. Now hit enter a couple more times, and kabam! The linear regression model. Plugging in the values for A and B gives us the linear regression model for the world population in billions x years after 1950. Part B. According to the model found in Part A, what was the world population in 1979, the year Mr. Passwater was born? 1979 is 29 years after 1950, so y at 29 will estimate the world population in billions in 1979. Because we stored the regression model in Y1, we can use the graphing calculator to evaluate Y1 at 29. Just hit VARS, Y VARS, enter, and enter again to bring up Y1. To evaluate Y1 at 29, just put it in parentheses like this. Kabam! 4.527 billion people. Without the units, this answer is meaningless, so be sure to include these units. Part C. What is the residual of the total world population for the year 1990? Did our model underestimate or overestimate the total world population for the year 1990? Recall that the residual value equals the actual value minus the predicted value. Let's look back at the table for the actual world population in 1990. However, keep in mind that 1990 is 40 years since 1950, so 40 will be the input value. So the total world population in 1990 was 5.32 billion people. So there's the actual value. How about the predicted value? Well, that'll be y at 40. On the calculator, we need y1 at 40. So back to vars, y vars, enter, enter again. y at 40 is 5.385. To avoid the risk of a rounding error here, I'm going to go back and type in 5.32 minus y at 40, so we don't lose any of the decimals. Small shortcut, 5.32 minus. I can go up to the answer that I got before and hit enter. That brings it down. Negative 0.0646. So the residual was negative 0.0646 billion. And we see that our model overestimated the total world population for the year 1990. Notice that if you get a negative residual value, it means that your model overestimated. A positive residual value means your model underestimated. Number seven, a regression model was created for the data in the graph upper left. The residual plot for the model is given above. Which of the following statements about the regression model is best? Before I even look at the answers, I see that the residual plot shows a pattern. And if the residual plot shows a pattern, it means the model was not appropriate. These two choices say the model is appropriate, 
So we know that the answer is not A or C. Both B and D say that the model is not appropriate. So how do we know which one is the right answer? Well, looking at the data pattern, we see that an exponential model would be very appropriate. Um, we are looking for the answer that is not appropriate. So that would be a quadratic regression model. So the answer is B. Number eight, Mr. Passwater used a set of data to create a quadratic regression model. The residual plot for this model is shown above. Based on the residual plot above, which of the following conclusions is correct? Remember, when you are looking at a residual plot, no pattern means the model was appropriate. So the answer is A. The residual plot has no apparent pattern, so the quadratic model was appropriate. Number nine, a set of data was used to create a linear, quadratic, and an exponential regression model. The residual plots for the three models are shown above. Based on the three residual plots, which of the following could be an appropriate model for the data? The lack of a pattern in the exponential regression model residuals means that the exponential model is the one that is appropriate. So the answer is C, because that is the exponential model. Number 10. Mr. Passwater loves to invest his money in mutual funds. Over the past 20 years, he has closely tracked how his account grows and has noticed that each year his account grows by approximately 10.4%. If Mr. Passwater wants to find a function that models the amount of money in his account over time, should he use a linear, quadratic, or exponential model? Give a reason for your answer. Please use the following College Board vocabulary. He should use an exponential regression model because the output value is changing proportionally over equal length input value intervals. Just to expand on that, the growth factor here is 100% plus the 10.4%. So the growth factor is 110.4%. As a decimal, that's a growth factor of 1.104. That means if Mr. Passwater made an initial investment of $10,000, to find out how much he would have after one year, you would multiply by 1.104. That's $11,040. To find the amount after two years, we would multiply by 1.104 again. Because the output values are increasing by repeated multiplication, we say that the output values are increasing proportionally. Specifically, this is the exponential model that would give the amount in Mr. Passwater's account after t years. Number 11. After Mr. Passwater creates his model from question 10, he uses the model to create a residual plot in order to check the appropriateness of his model. If his model was appropriate, what should we expect to see when looking at the residual plot? If his model was appropriate, he should see no pattern in the residual plot. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.